We've got Jack Capizza with us today from the Globe and Mail. Thanks for joining us, Jack. Hey, thanks, Mike. Wanted to uh, talk about an article you wrote uh, recently about uh, people being driven away from uh, the old medium, uh, television, for example, into some of the, uh, the newer mediums. Uh, what are you seeing here? Uh, well, I'm seeing, I suppose, would be something that we've never seen before, at least in our lifetimes or at least not much in our lifetimes, uh, just the effect of, of what people are spending their time on as a whole new entertainment medium comes online, namely the, inter the, uh, the Internet. Uh, uh, studies are, are showing what people are doing. You know, they're, they're shifting their viewing habits from television to the Internet. They're renting movies. They're downloading videos from YouTube. Uh, they're reading their news online and so on. So, of course, the inevitable conclusion, if one were to be so jumpy as to jump to one, uh, is that uh, the traditional media, meaning radio, television, newspapers, are suffering. And, uh, and, and that's the conclusion that they've come to. I don't trust that myself. Well, it's, uh, it's interesting because I've seen some of the stats on online advertising and, and how fast it's growing. I think it was $40 billion last year, growing to $80 billion in 2010. Uh, so obviously the advertisers uh, believe that more people are using these new mediums, aren't they? Yeah, well, there's an awful lot of movement toward the Internet. I mean, what's happening is that the advertisers are now beginning to realize that there's, there's a large and measurable audience <laughs> for their product out there. Who knew? And that they're now moving their advertising dollars to that medium. Whether that is a stable uh, uh, audience or not, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it's, inter now, I, I it's, it's interesting because um, you, you wonder how much of that content, what type of content people are watching on the Internet. I mean, is this affecting, you know, like uh, television series, like first run series, uh, or are they more watching like smaller clips on the Internet? Uh, no, I, I think it's much more smaller clips of the Internet right now. But remember, I think, you know, if you take a very long look at it, what you're going to be able to see eventually is complete streaming video everywhere for like just like on television, you turn it on, there it is, you watch it for hours, you turn it off, you go to the bathroom, you take your lunch, whatever, you know, but it'll be there. Uh, that's what's going to happen sometime in the future. It's not happening now, it's hard to see how it's going to happen, but it will happen. I mean, 15 years ago we couldn't conceive of the internet at all. Uh, so what's going to happen, of course, is that if we measure this at any one given moment, you know, like take a snapshot of it in time and then try and project something from it, it's going to be a rather awkward thing. Uh, I, I don't think you can ever actually take something that is in, in, in spasmodic growth, let's call it, and, and pre uh, predict anything from any one snapshot of it. Uh, that being said, however, there are a couple of things that are interesting. Um, the new media, much ballyhooed uh, uh, citizen journalism, uh, blogger sites, and so on and so forth, uh, has somehow, I don't know how this happened, set, it itse set itself at war with traditional media and suggesting that, that the new media are terrifying the old media and that the old media have a good reason to sweat. Uh, in fact, what happened is that there was another study done by IDC Canada recently, which discovered that people, in fact, are using the old media just as much as they ever did before. If they get it online, they're still getting it from the old media online, such as the globeandmail.com website. Uh, that doesn't mean they're, they're using, you know, the medium is not really particularly important in this case, whether it's online or on paper. Uh, they're still getting it from the Globe and Mail. The suggestion is that uh, what's happening here is that, that people are getting their information, their news, from sources that are trusted. People still are not trusting um, the, uh, the, the citizen journalists or the bloggers that much. I mean, after all, those, it, it takes an awful long time to um, earn people's trust and respect. And you can't do it just by simply arriving on the Internet saying, Hi, I'm a blogger, believe me. So, so old, world, uh, old world brands are still very important then, even coming into the new medium. Well, you're talking about trust here. Now, I mean, I, I put a very provocative title on that. Uh, uh, does the medium matter anymore? I was tweaking the, uh, the, the ears of those people who uh, interpret Marshall McLuhan, and they tend to mar interpret him every which way. I've never quite understood <laughs> what the pattern was. Uh, mind you, I've never understood anything Marshall McLuhan said either. Uh, no, that's another story. Anyhow, uh, the, uh, the fact remains is that it's, it's a matter of the trust, credibility. Um, uh, the Globe and Mail has an awful lot to lose, for instance, as does CTV, CBC, and any other major network, has an awful lot to lose if they get something wrong. A citizen blogger 
has nothing to lose. No. Okay, maybe somebody will say something bad about him, but the next day he's online again and everything's just fine, right? Uh, but this does not earn you trust. Yeah. It earns you a presence. It doesn't earn you trust. Some people uh, will believe the bloggers over us, and that's their privilege, you know. Uh, but if they really want to have trust, uh, a trustworthy source, then they should go to the old media. Well, Jack, I want to thank you for joining us again today. Thank you, Mike. That was Jack Capizza from the Globe and Mail. You can check out uh, all of Jack's articles and blogging up at uh, globetechnology.com.